This is Luke chapter 15. Shh, guys. He said, there once was a man. Come on. One out, man. And he had two sons. Son number one and son number two. Son number two is a lifeguard. <laughs> the younger said to his father, Father, I want right now what's coming to me. <laughs> so the father divided the property between them. It wasn't long before the younger son packed his bags and left for a distant country. <laughs> <laughs> there, in the distant country, undisciplined. Here, yeah, come back, come back right over. This is this is distant enough. Undisciplined and dissipated, he wasted everything he had. <laughs> After he had gone through all his money, there was a bad famine uh, through that whole country, and he began to hurt. He signed on with a citizen there who assigned him to his fields to slop the pigs. He was so hungry, he would have eaten the corn cobs in the pig's slop, but no one would give him any. That brought him to his senses. He said, all those farmhands working for my father sit down to three meals a day, and here I am starving to death. I'm going back to my father. I'll say to him, father... I've sinned against God. I've sinned before you. I don't deserve to be called your son. So take me on as a higher <coughs> hand. He got right up and went home to his father. Oh, father. father, come on in. You guys, come on in. Okay. He came home to his father. When he no, was no, still... No, father, when he was here. still a oh, long... Okay. Yeah, that's good. That's good. When he was still a long way off, his father saw him, his heart pounding. He ran out and embraced him. Hi. Hi. Embrace, embrace. <laughs> and kissed him. Oh. Good enough. All right. Uh, the son started his speech. Father, I've sinned against God. I've sinned against God. I've sinned before you. I don't deserve to be called your son ever again. But the father wasn't listening. He was calling to the servants, Quick, bring a clean set of clothes and dress him. Put the family ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Then get the green-fed heifer and roast it. We are going to feast. We're going to have a wonderful time. My son is here, given up for dead and now alive. Given up for lost and now found. They began to have a wonderful time. <laughs> All this time, his older son was out in the field. When the day's work was done, he came in. As he approached the house, he heard the music and dancing. Calling over one of the house boys, he asked, what's going on? He told him, your brother came home. Your father has ordered a feast. Barbecued beef. Because he has him home safe and sound, the older brother stalked off in an angry sulk and refused to join in. <laughs> His father came out and tried to talk to him. But he wouldn't, but he wouldn't listen. The son said, Look how many years I've stayed here serving you, never giving you one moment of grief. But have you ever thrown a party for me and my friends? Then this son of yours, who has thrown away your money on whores, shows up and you go all out with a feast. His father said, son, you don't understand. You're with me all the time and everything that, my, that is mine is yours. But this is a wonderful time. We had to celebrate. This brother of yours was dead. Now he's alive. <laughs> he was lost and now he's found. <laughs> 